Today we have with us Marie McGuire, who is a lovely lady who's come from a very well-known family in our community. She has been a good friend, a good mentor, and a lovely patron of the library. I'd like to ask you, Marie, if you would mind to be kind enough to give us a little background of your family and what it was like to grow up in Sea Caucus. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Kathy. Growing up in Sea Caucus was an, a lovely experience for me. It was an entirely different town. Now, I'm 80 years old now, so when you start uh, thinking of what child my childhood, you know, when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we were part of a, a stoop community. Yep. Everybody sat on their front steps. They didn't have patios in the back then. And you knew all your neighbors. Every mother on the block was your mother. If your mother wasn't available, you felt they could put the band-aid on your knee. So we would look for different things to do. You'd explore. There were a lot of empty lots then that were even part of the Meadowlands Commission. There were activities, you rode your bicycle, that was exciting. And it wasn't until you got to the junior high school that you knew people from all sections of town. So what was your escape? Well, your escape in that many cases was the library. Um, I come from a family, mom and dad, and my younger brother Michael. And it was an experience for us to go to the library because you could look at all the books and see how exciting they were just looking at the covers. And maybe we could get a book about some strange place or we could get one that was just funny. But it was fun growing up in town. Everybody knew everybody. Right, unlike now, although we know most everybody now. We know a lot of people now because uh, in many cases the library has been an asset in that respect. That's true. There's many people that made friendships here. Uh, take us back, though, again in time to when you were on your way to visit the library for the first time. What was the town like when you walked from your house to the town hall? What were the grounds like outside of the library, if you can recall? And what were your memories upon entering the building? I know you had to pass the police station right. and, you know, let me just well, see what you thought. At that time, we lived in the center of town in the second street area there so we would be walking down and you just walked and you saw houses a few empty lots and then when you got down to the plaza it was an experience there was no acme or acme no yes. way you want to say it there was no firehouse or the library was then too that was all meadow that didn't come until later that was just open space route three wasn't there in the Meadowlands there. Um, what was there is my uncle's drugstore, uh, a few other little stores, another drugstore in town, Al Wanna had a drugstore, and it, we would walk up and just look, and it was exciting just being out and being in the town, and my mother would be holding my hand and my brothers and bringing us up to the library. When we got to the town hall, that was the impressive building in town. You know, it just looked out at you and you, you would look up, you know, and say, what wonders does this building hold for me? I knew it was called the municipal building, we called it the town hall then. And we knew the police were there, you know, but then when we went inside and you just looked around at the high ceiling and the steps, <laughs> and the steps, and the steps, it just seemed never ending, you know. God bless my mother for bringing us <laughs> and yes. going up those steps with us. And then as I say, when you went in, the excitement as you were greeted by Miss Dudley, Mrs. Dudley there, who was the librarian when I went then as a young child, and you, you could look all around in the limited space we did have. Most of the time we went during the day. Uh, if you went at night, you were greeted by the 8 o'clock siren or whistle as we used to call it. And you stood there and thought that there had to be an earthquake because the whole building shook when the siren went off oh in the town hall. It was for fires and also the eight o'clock whistle, which greeted us all and said, run home. You have exactly five minutes to get there before your mother's looking for you. <laughs> but it was an exciting experience. 
because it was the great place to be. Well, I really get the sense that you're saying uh, a charming little building. Right. I know that that's what I've heard before and that's what I envision. I haven't been there, I, I, but I get it from you and I get it from others I've spoken to that it was a special little place, an right. attic. Uh, uh, it was. If you can look at pictures from it, you know, and things like that, you can see it, it suited the community at that at time. At that time, right. Uh, both you and your husband, Joe, were educators, and yet if not busy enough, you became active in the library when it was located in the Plaza Center site. Could you tell us about that? Because I've heard stories. Oh, <laughs> my husband was a library enthusiast. I think that if there were living quarters and libraries, he would be there. He would get a room so he could just go around, but he loved to browse, look around. And then we heard about the library running the story out, you know, for the children. And he felt that what he wanted to do was to start the story out. It actually came from my husband, Joseph. But we started it and we were helped by an older gentleman and a young lady that I had taught in the fifth grade in Sea Caucus. And the four of us would run little story hours during the summer. It was an enjoyable experience and I think it gave the younger children something else to do, you know, no school break. Yeah, but what are we going to do? Well, we can go to the library. We can go to the library and pick out a book and we go to the library and listen to, as we affectionately called my husband, Father Goose, at that time. <laughs> but um, it, w it was a wonderful experience. I think we enjoyed it more than the children. When you read a story to a child and you know that you have reached that child and you see the glow in his or her eyes and the thrill and the enjoyment and the pleasure that that ton is getting, you just fill up yourself. You know, and, and now it's all those little commercials they have where they use babies, you know, after they hear a sound or something. But yes. we had that long before television showed that reality business. It was a wonderful experience to do that. And we were always at the library anyway. Your tradition of summertime library school continues to this yes. day. I was lonely. 2014. It's always good to hear that when I see it going on. Right. It was always a winter program and then it ended and that was it and until you and your husband came along. So right. there's and many, our, many children films, yes. that have to say thank you to the McGuire's. And we say they're welcome because but, we got the pleasure yes. just as much as they did. Um, on that same topic of volunteering, when the Friends of the Library was established in 1997, we searched for a president who would lead us to success in our goal of assisting the library to be the educational, informational, and recreational hub of the community. We didn't have to look too far when we asked you if you would fill that position. What was it like to be president of this new dynamic club? Well, first of all, I considered it an honor. And I considered it a responsibility. Having been elected the first president, I felt that I had a set of standard. No one said I had to do anything like that, but that was something I felt was important. Set the standard for other presidents to follow and other members to follow. But I knew I would not be able to do it alone, so I sought help from the community. And working with you as librarian, who is very important, I felt, for us to bring programs into the building, to let them know we were more than just a library. We were a community resource. Now, one of the things that I felt we did to bring community members in was to run the programs. We ran the program about the history of the Sea Caucus. We brought in a lot of older residents who brought in old maps and diagrams, and they talked about these things. And I think they were honored that we felt that was an important thing to bring to our community resource. Then to bring history, because the library services all areas, we brought in veterans from the wars. And how many people really knew how many of our men and women were in World War II? How many were captured? How many were wounded? 
I mean, I don't think we knew all of that. I knew some of it. I always remember the sign we had in front of the municipal building where the original library was that listed all of our servicemen. Yes. And saw that they remember the gold stars that mm -hmm. were there and the names of the streets. So I think that by bringing in programs like that and then inviting the history classes from the high school to come down and see the displays because these gentlemen had brought back a lot of the awards, oh, not awards, but things they had treasured because they found bayonets and objects from the different uh, allies and objects from the Axis, you know, that we fought against. So I thought that that was good too because whether they got something from the display or not, as the history teachers spoke to them, they saw that this was, this was World War II. We were involved. Everybody was involved. Little children were involved in their schools by bringing in newspaper and such. So this way the young people got to meet those who had fought in the war to help us, to save us. And I think that was the kind of program we ran that I thought went very well because it brought in different people to the library and they found out what the resources were. So I think that that was important. The continuation of the mini fair I thought was important. At the time I was president, we were in the library in the center of town and we had our mini fair out in the grounds of Buckmellow Park and in the library too. So I think that that was the thing that I felt I fulfilled my responsibility and I felt working with the library, yourself and the staff, you know, we were able to achieve a great deal. I personally, and to backtrack a little bit, other than friends, the library was always very important to me and to my husband. Um, I mentioned him because we were always in the library together. What did we use the library for? Well, to take books out, to spend some time browsing. We also would use the library if we were going on trips. If we were going to, um, let's say, a European country, we would go to the children's section of the library. They had books about geography, about interesting places. And if you looked at those books, you were further strengthened. What is it I want to see in this country? Because they always highlighted the important things. Exactly. What is the Eiffel Tower? Mm -hmm. oh, I saw a picture of it here. What was Big Ben? Was that a tall gentleman? No, that was this big lot. And we got that from the library. If we were going to a foreign country, what do you order when you go and eat? Have some knowledge of Spanish, some knowledge of Italian. What would I do in France if I went there? We looked at cookbooks. The library had many cookbooks of all different cultures. We would look at them, see what we would like, write that down in French, and then we were able to order a meal. We traveled with people in groups, and we saw people eating the same thing day and day because they didn't know how to order anything, and they were not the type to ask. One couple told us they ate pizza at night for three days because they didn't know what else to add, Isn't order. Isn't that something? Because, that was clever. You know, but for us, exploring the cookbooks right. really gave us a sense of, uh, this way we can right. get something that we know we're eating. Because some of the things, such as snails, I didn't want to eat. Right. I learned how to say that right away. Go, no, no. But it, that was how we use the library. We use it that way, and plus we use it in our graduate studies. Right, and we you had the college an opera. libraries, but we also, you know, were able to reinforce things by using all the resources here, and we could get books from other libraries if needed. Right. You mentioned the opera and the plays that you oh, also uh, oh yeah we were very interested in doing all those things because we were music lovers and we were special opera lovers so we liked to come and uh, look at the library and review the books we had some books of our own at home but we liked to look at them when the library I think it was last year they had an opera singer come with her accompanist I had seen her perform at the Met so I was able to go up to her and say you know. I'd seen you perform at the Met when you sang. And uh, when, I don't know if she was moved by it or not, but she said that was very nice. I'm that sure I she was. Sing. But um, it was a great experience in that respect. You know, when you were a child, we didn't have libraries in our school like they do today. There was a bookcase in the back of the room. And those teachers had to keep those books in good condition. So they very often, not all of them, covered them. 
in those green book covers we used to use for our textbooks. There was no excitement there. What book were you getting? I know some green book that had a number on it. Uh -huh. You know, I had to wait and open it up to do. In our library, you could see the cover and see how colorful that was. Just as children used to look at the album covers of their LPs, I probably just stated myself. Yes, you did, a little bit. But that was really something pleasant to do when you went to the library. I'm sorry I'm jumping around, but... Oh, that's good, you know, because your love of the, the library the, shows... It brings back lots of memories. That's exactly what we were and hoping. that's why I like talking about them that way. When uh, we were in the library at Plaza Center and you were a fabulous president of the Friends of the Library, you did all that you mentioned, but you also helped us bring recognition to the community that we needed more space. You mentioned we were inside for cake and coffee so that they could see a visual of they how tight to, it well, was. We have room. You'll have to be over here because we had the firehouse and they were very gracious, I used to say, to let us share. But we don't have all the books out. We don't have our scrapbooks out. We don't have that room. And by bringing the people into the library and continuing to do that, with the mini fair and also when we celebrated the anniversary. People who were library lovers before could see all the wonders, but it brought in more, more and more people to see what this could offer to you. And I think that uh, responsibility that the friends had, I mean, not just buying gifts such as the piano and things like this and getting everything uh, copied to it, so we have a great history of Sea Caucus. I think it's important that uh, we keep encouraging people to come here and realize what a great community resource it is. Starting the book club, starting the children's programs. I'm thrilled when I come in and I see the little children playing chess on the chess set that we have downstairs. You know, I keep on walking over every now and then hoping they'll say, do you want to play with us? <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that we have truly become a resource. And I credit you, Margaret Gassioli, Ms. Dudley, for all of that because you had to start the interest and bring the interest to the community when we were small and when we have grown. Yes, and I, and I credit uh, Jennifer May, our new library director, uh, for bringing more of the culturalism right. into the community. Libraries have to remain relevant and we move on with everything. Uh, when we moved to this new library, now that we mention it, we didn't have too many naysayers. There were a few who didn't necessarily believe the library needed that much space, but most people uh, were with us and they volunteered. Oh, Your yeah, that, spirit that of volunteers. was unbelievable because I had only heard of one other community that was able to do that and that was up in Sussex County where volunteers just carried the books from the old library to the new one and I believe you must have numbered them, shelves or someone had told them where, and they would bring the books and just set them all up there. Right. Once well, they were in the shelves, then your staff was able to do it. That started, I think, a tremendous amount of community effort. I think people were glad to do it. And as for the naysayers, there are many people who see cost, not value. Now, cost and value, people might say, isn't that the same thing? I said, no, no. Cost, all you think about is the money, the money, the money. Value is what it brings to you. Right. We have children here all the time. You have parents bringing in the younger ones. We have you provided movies. You provide the cultural things. Uh, some of the music programs they have, or speakers. Uh, the people who come and volunteer here, like caregivers, teaching people or helping them learn how to be a caregiver. I don't think we realize how many people in town serve as caregivers. You know, or That's need caregivers. So having a program like that, having the younger people have their programs, having programs for both, you know, the adults and the children, it's a continuation thing. And if the parents bring the children when they're younger, we can hope for them to keep on going so that they will come on their own then, and then in turn when they are older, bring their children here. That's exactly right. I'm all for when the baby is born, get a library card. Yes. Why wait? The people get a social security card, we'll get your get library, your library card, too. card. Margaret Grazioli, our uh, former director, used to say 
this was the one building in the community that you used from birth till death. True. So uh, it, it really is true. That's you, true. You're in and out of the schools, but this one you're constantly using. You have been a wonderful spokesman for the library, and I wish that we could put this on TV to give every, we'll put it on our local TV, but I wish everyone had the advantage of hearing just what you had to say about libraries. Well, you know, I like to think of the future, but I am a traditionalist, and probably I will offend everybody now. I want to hold a book. Yes. I don't want to hold a Kindle. I don't want to listen to it. I want to be able to hold it and read as long as I can. I don't care if the top of the page is a little worn, because that tells me somebody's read it. And not just one person, many people. When I get a brand new book, but the date is, you know, maybe 10 years before, and I don't see anything happening to it. People didn't like this book. Let me see if there's one that I can uh, judge by by that. And uh, I just wish everybody would realize what coming to a library can do for you. Uh, the people that you meet, you start a conversation, you have current newspapers, you can look back a couple of days or weeks and see a newspaper in the library, you can go and use, you know, the modern technology and look up books and do things like this, but the book is the essential thing and reading it is important and I think, I think that that's what a library means to me. I love to read, I brought back two books I'm going to bring back, take two books out, I take two at a time, bring them back in three days, because I have books on that I'm still reading and rereading. I'm a mystery buff. I was just going to ask you, what's your favorite? favorite? I read Agatha Christie books every year. I used to read them in the summer and just reread them. I watch her, that when it's on television. I love the way she wrote. I love Miss Marple. I love their whole girl, things like that. And I love some of the new modern mystery writers and such like this. The book club has broadened my reading habits. Um, we have about 12 people, um, a lot of older, older residents in the terms of how many years you've taught here, and a lot of new people who have moved into Harmon Cove area. And it's a joy reading the book and discussing it because we have diversified opinions, but everybody appreciates everybody else's opinion. So I have known, I've got many new friends. I've broadened my reading habits. I have no, well, I never did have any qualms about offering an opinion, but I think everybody who's a member feels, I can offer my opinion here in this reading club. And if I didn't understand something without criticism, I can say, well, I didn't quite get that. What did you see in there? And it's a wonderful experience, just exploring, which I will continue to do forever. Oh, that's wonderful. And you know, from your book club, there's been many offshoots. Yes, I know. The There's one here with started. the staff of the library that has no time to sit right. at the book club, so they go out to dinner after right. work. And there are other book clubs that sprung up along right. the well, way. Which is great. I belong to a dinner book club, so we go to places for dinners and great. pick something you know unusual. You're fine. So, it but it's you your book club that started To get together with different people, broaden your experiences that way. I've enjoyed that immensely. Do you have any predictions of what you think libraries might do in the future? Something that you might even have an idea about well, now? Yeah, but I'm sure I like it, but I keep on thinking we're all going to have some type of electronic in our house, and it will contain or hook into something that has every book that's ever been written and will be written, and we won't have to move. We'll just sit there, click on a switch, and we could be reading a book that shows up and somebody in South America could be reading the same book. I don't like that idea, but I think if we don't run out of power as a country, yes, or, or <coughs> excuse me, or a world, I think we would do something like that. I think it's going to get to that, but as I said, I still want to hold that book. Oh, we must have those books. What do we do when we lose our electricity? See, we go right to the book and a candle. Right, the book and a candle is right. So Marie, I want to thank you so much for sharing this history. Is there anything else you no, want, to want to add thank before you we close? For offering me the opportunity because it brought back a lot of memories for me about you know 
the story how we started starting and going to the library the first time, walking into the library down at the plaza for the first time, the experience of being president of you know, the Friends of the Library and being able, not as much right now, to participate continuously and fully coming to the programs and attending the meetings uh, because I feel so strongly. <laughs> I laughingly told my husband many times he must have built many libraries because I was constantly paying his library fines. Uh oh. <laughs> because he would get a book and read it quickly, then go back and read it over again to really understand the parts. He read a lot of technical books and enjoyed those, you know, nonfiction. And uh, never brought books back on time. I said, You are the bane of all libraries. He said, no, they'll probably name one for me because I'll probably have paid enough fines. Oh, so. That's very cute. That's but a cute start. True. But don't, don't uh, think that we don't use you to your fullest. Your brain, and I can think people will attest to it from this interview, is still a very, very working organ up there. And you guide us beautifully. So stay there, mentor us and uh, continue to enjoy your library. Thank you so much. Thank I you. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity, as Anna said. And I thank you, too, to my film man over there, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. It was very pleasant. Good. Thank you very much.